Oh, uh, uh, I don't have any cards. Shit. <laughs> I don't have any cards. I can't sacrifice anything. No! <laughs> I've what lost. I'm fuck? getting sent to the shadow realm. Like, okay, so my fucking friend is telling me uh, there's an official Lego of Kaiba for an anniversary thing. It's all coming. Like, marketing has already happened. Kaiba is put onto so many products. Like, I remember when I went to see my family in Japan, I saw his face on canned bread. This was years ago. What? <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, his face was on canned bread. Holy shit. <laughs> you know what? I gotta look that up. I gotta find that. Hold on. Let oh, me see. No. Let me see. Uh, <laughs> canned bread Kaiba. Oh my. You just open bread. the fucking can and it's bread shaped like I Kaiba. I swear to God. Nope. I'm oh, not finding no, anything on Tumblr. Or not on Tumblr. Better oh, God, yet. Cool. Like it, it's bread, but his face is baked into it. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> oh my oh. god that makes me want to that makes me want to put up the uh, spongebob meme of uh canned bread oh no oh my god all righty <laughs> hey guys what's up uh today i am here with my special guest lucy lucy say hi hi <laughs> and uh we were just talking about Yu-Gi-Oh bullshit uh, when we started the stream, and apparently, uh, I have another friend of mine who is very, uh, who is, like, pretty, like, a little bit educated on Yu-Gi-Oh!, Apparently, like, they, like, okay, so here's the context. Me and Lucy, we were bitching about Yu-Gi-Oh! Sevens, and it looks like a fucking Yu-Gi-Oh! slash Beyblade collab, and... I was getting a little pissed because of the fact that some random character has the blue eyes, and I'm like, dude, Kaiba has, like, he has all three cards. There is no way in hell another person could have another blue eyes unless it's fake. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and the CGI is bad. It's really bad. Oh my god. It it's is so bad. bad. It is bad. And I just... Oh, thank you guys. <sighs> <laughs> and then my friend just informed me that apparently Kaiba's face was on canned bread. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Kaiba, oh. is, Kaiba is a bit of an influential character in the entire fucking Yu-Gi-Oh! series next to Yugi and Yami. So it's like, I can kind of understand why he would be a poster boy. But mm -hmm. still, what the fuck, oh. bruh? Yu Gi Oh Seven looks more uh. like Future Card Buddy Fight. LOL. Not even. It looks more Not like a uh, fucking Beyblade. <laughs> Wait. Oh my god. No, no. You know what? No, no, no. That's that's an insult to Beyblade. Beyblade's more fucking metal. <laughs> I can't insult Beyblade like that. No, because, like, uh, there's certain, like, iterations of Beyblade that are actually, like, kind of edgy, and I love them, but, like... What the oh, fuck? Oh, God. It, it's closer to Bakugan, honestly. I... But, like, I don't even want to insult Bakugan either. <laughs> Yo, I want... My friend just sent me a picture of a Kaiba body pillow. I want... <gasps> I oh no! Want and apparently it's Ooh. probably the official one too. Oh my god! That's I'm asking her to give Ooh. me a link. I'm asking her to give Ooh. me a link. Ooh, that's uh, mm, that's a uh, ooh. ooh yeah. yeah. <clears throat> oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm We're sorry. I, I see it's abs okay. and I. <laughs> Here, let me let me show y'all. Like, <laughs> we're not thirsty. We. <laughs> Like, Kaiba's not even my fave, and I'm over here just like. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> I am dead. Okay, so today we are going to be uh, doing tips and tricks. Oh my god! I'm sorry, my friend what? Just sent me a link. It's fucking fun. Dude! <laughs> Bro! What? It's 40, bro. I'm gonna buy it. 
oh god yes you have you have to like obligation she says it's real you can buy it too still i believe oh my like here here's the link of what she sent me look at this look at this oh my god i don't even know what okay there's also fabric like there's soft satin peach skin velvet two-way tree car i don't even know what the fuck that is oh i what the fuck I want peach. Skin. Wait, they have a fucking body pillow of Inosuke? He's 15. Oh no. Oh no. I mean, like, yeah, he's abs out most of the time, but like, ah. Oh no. Then if he don't. <laughs> I legit, my friend, she also said, holy fuck, he is even more muscular than I thought. All of that from playing a children's card game. Yep. I, I'm sure he has a workout regimen, he but I mean, like, yeah, has he's a workout pretty workout routine. He probably like, has a workout routine, probably. I guarantee he does, because, like, well, <laughs> fucking, cause fucking Atem's over here, like, being all fit and buff, and he's like, I gotta catch up. Well, here's the thing. Here's the thing that uh, I learned somewhere. How, when it comes to um, having a successful lifestyle, one of the, one of the key uh, things of having a successful lifestyle is when you have a regular workout routine. And I think Kaiba would have that because not only does he need to show that, you know, he is a, he's the boss of his company, but he also needs to show that not only can he act like it, but he can look like it. And I think that- Yeah, I mean, like, he's like the richest man in probably the world at this point. He so, probably like... is. I swear you gotta to God, be looking at your I, I gotta get it, but I need to know how, like, the size of this one pillow that I have, because it is a body pillow, but I do not know how big it is. And yeah, the options they have is 50 centimeters to 150, 50 centimeters to 106 to like 160, and then 60 to 180. <laughs> And then you know there's peach. Yeah, I've got like and... two boggy pillows, but like they're just plain boggy pillows, and I use one so I don't fucking fall into my headboard and the other one to prop my head up. <laughs> <laughs> I just I just want I just want some like one to cuddle with. That's it. That's, that's yeah, I like it. I almost got a Grimjow one oh, from really? like uh Bleach? an anime store. Yeah, because, oh. like, I was super obsessed with Bleach for a while, oh, and Grimjow was, like, my husband. <laughs> oh, my God. Okay. I mean, to be fair. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, he was, I, I honestly feel like he was one of the best fucking characters in Bleach, not gonna lie. Mm-hmm. Should I get soft satin, peach skin, velvet, or, oh, shit. If I were to get soft satin, it would be, like, the least expensive. Because I'm thinking I need to get the bigger size just in case. But then again, I I don't fucking know how long this damn pillow is. Do you have, like, a tape measure or something? I do, but I don't know where the fuck it is. <laughs> uh, size guide? There's a size guide? I mean, that should probably help. I would hope. What the fuck? There's a Venom body pillow? Okay, I'm done. Oh, um, um, <clears throat> well. <laughs> that took a turn real quick. <laughs> it's harsh small that a normal body pillow is bigger than her. To be honest, it kind of is. Um, yeah. Okay, I am so sorry. We got extremely off, to off track. Um, <laughs> I'll have to worry about the whole body pillow thing later. <laughs> I oh, swear to God, God, guys, as soon as I get that body pillow, I will post it around just to prove you guys that, yeah, I did get it. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> and it might even be a face reveal. You don't know. But, mm. uh, yeah, because I noticed that a couple people have asked if I'm going to do a face reveal. But um, I'm just going to I'm just going to pin that to my bookmark bar for now. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Alrighty. We started this stream and of course we have to talk about Kaiba. I'm sorry, okay? I love him. <laughs> hey, I, love I don't him. blame you. That picture was hot, 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 hot. <clears throat> Anyways. <laughs> but Daddy, I'm not even a Kaiba him. stand, I'm a Yugi stand. <laughs> but Daddy, I love him. <laughs> 
I'm just worried about like finding Yugi body pillows because like they make I him mean, look. I can look okay. for one for you. Kind of weird. <laughs> Listen, I can look for one for you, and even if I can't find straight up Yugi, I can find at least Yami Yugi because I know that like he. I mean, yeah, he's hot. I'm not gonna lie. He cute. He cute. What the fuck? There is real Asuka body pill. Oh, I'm done. I'm floored. I am. <gasps> There's one of Claude from fucking Black Belly. I'm floored. What? I'm floored. I am so floored. What the fuck? Here I am getting off topic yet again. I need to stop. Okay. Let's let's put the body pillows away. I'm sorry <laughs> when I see something like this. I need to Oh boy. <laughs> I want to die. <laughs> Oh god, you'd have Kaiba in one corner and then you'd have Ryo in another corner oh, and then you'd have god. Daedara in another corner yo, and then yo. fucking there's, Alistair in a third, fourth corner. Yo, there is one of Black Hat. I am done. Uh. <laughs> I am so done. Dude, Black Hat versus Alistair though. Jesus fucking Christ, I don't even want to think about that. The world would end <laughs> immediately. The world would so end. Oh! Oh, I'm so happy. He deserves so much love. Okay, he we are it. getting so fucking oh, off topic here. <sighs> How far are we in? Please tell me there is a Dio body pillow. Yes, there is. I actually just passed it. There of course there's a Dio body pillow. Of course there's a Dio oh. body pillow. Like, bro, he is daddy. He's like the most lusted after. He is! <laughs> He really is, and that's what's funny. There's, like, I think three different types of uh, Dio body pillows. I... Uh, yeah. Shiori, yeah. Mizu, Yami, which actor? Uh, Alistair from Has Been Hosted. Uh, Harsh is small, that makes her that more makes adorable. Me. I am not adorable. Yes, you are, you're so cute. No, I'm not. <laughs> you are, though. Uh... Cuddling. Okay, okay, uh, we are getting so off track here. It's almost, it's like, we've already been here for like 12 minutes and already we're, we're talking about this shit. Okay, let's actually get to the topic at hand. Uh, hi, everybody, uh, or my, my lovely degenerates, as I like to call all of you, uh, because you are my degenerates and I love every single fucking one of you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Hmm. No, they, they do sell female body pillows. They do. It's just we were mostly looking at the males. Okay, so uh, what about a star <laughs> platinum body pillow? I mean, it's very likely. It, it's very likely. You just got to look. They've got a body pillow for, like, everything nowadays. they got female. Sure they got can. male. They have trans body pillows. They have furry body pillows. And they have They've got bendy ones. body pillows. They've got bald basic body pillows. Oh, God. <laughs> Here is oh, a Yusei Fu there is a Yusei Fudo body pillow. I don't know, guys. I can I, I haven't really scrolled through everything, and even if I did, it would require me to share my screen, and I don't want to I do don't that. have the energy or the fucking courage to look through that shit. I'm like the cowardly actually, lion. I, I actually scrolled through, and there was actually some naked body pillows, too. Like, straight up nude. I'm not even surprised. <laughs> I'm pretty sure if I were to buy something like that, my mom would be continuously shocked every time she would come into my room and be all like, Jesus, there's a there's a dick. There's a dick. I'd never hear the end of it from my friends. I would never hear the end of it from my mom. Oh, God. Bet they I'd have to, like, quickly flip it around every time somebody came in. Bet they don't have harsh body pillows. I mean, if it's high in demand and people want uh, Alexis body pillows... I will find an artist who is willing to do that and commission them, and then... Only in tasteful make... nudes, mind you. <laughs> Nothing explicit. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Okay, so we are here to talk about the tips and tricks of MS Paint. Now, mm -hmm. I have actually been getting at least a few people who have been coming to me on DeviantArt, and I think a couple other people on YouTube have also asked me for some tips and tricks. 
And here's the thing, um, it's kind of hard to really explain when you're not exactly showing what you're talking about. So I feel <laughs> it would be a good idea to, I suppose, make a, a stream where I give basic instructions and maybe a couple of advanced in instructions. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, just sh like if any of you guys are perhaps interested in doing MS Paint in the near future, I can show you exactly um, how MS Paint can work <clears throat> and the typical tools that you will need. Uh, I can promise you that you don't really need a lot of tools. Uh, in fact, you don't even need um you don't even need a like high tech drawing tablet or tablet why did i say tablet you don't need a drawing tablet to make your art pieces look good because i'm going to tell you this right now earlier this year and the and uh sometime around uh 2018 a lot of my base works they were done with the usage of a mouse i i never had a tablet until sometime later this year. Um, here, let me see if I can show an example. Let me see if I can show an example of a picture I did with just a mouse. Let me see. Um, okay, so I also did a little bit of a back-to-back -back sort of thing. Okay, so... This picture right here was done in 2018. It was done on April 2018. And mm -hmm. I'm I'll I'll show you Lucy because I'm pretty sure I had showed you this picture before. Mm -hmm. uh, I showed you this. This was done back in 2018 and that was just by a mouse. Oh. This wow. Was, this was just through a mouse. Holy shit. And then this this revolves around Devil Man, guys. So uh, you will see boobage because in Devil Man, there's a lot of boobage. Of course, there is. So wouldn't uh, have it any other way, though. That was in 2018, and then we have this. This was done uh, with the mouse. Like, just a mouse. I still didn't have a tablet when I did this. And this was done on April of this year. Yeah, like, the shading is so much better. Like, wow. Just the way you draw faces, too. It's, mm -hmm. like, wow. It looks so good. Honestly, um, before, uh... Before I even started using like an actual mouse, I did my base works with a mouse pad as well. And my base art, they didn't really look all that good when I just had uh, my mouse pad. And then I found that my creations were a lot easier after I got myself a mouse to help me um, further... Uh, to I guess further improve on my base works. Now I wouldn't really go and say that my base works are considered artworks. Um. Uh, let me see. Uh, let me see if I can find a good base work. Um. Let me see if I can find a good base work that I did. That was, like, done on mouse pad. Actually, I'm pretty sure I can find you a good base work that was done in mouse pad. And it was, like, way fucking back in 2013. <laughs> like, all the way back to 2013. It was honestly kind of fucking ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, because I was just that bad. I mean, like, I still consider base edits art, though. Because, like... I don't know. It's it's a little complicated because, like, obviously you want to give credit to the original base artist, but like you're taking something and kind of turning it into your own thing. Yeah, I mean, still. Um. Okay. So here is a prime example of what I did with just a mouse pad back in 2013, and then 
2017 rolled around. This was when I just had a mouse. I didn't have a tablet yet, and so I'm pretty sure you guys now can see the difference of what I did back then. I have done base work since 2013. I have not, I have not really stopped uh, using bases because the reason why I, I have trouble doing my own works is because I have a hard time figuring out placements and all that stuff. I have thought about going back to eyeballing and seeing if that would help, but mm -hmm. we'll just have to wait and see. Um, yeah, I mean, you improved so much. Uh, let me see. I'm pretty sure I also put up another good comparison, and it was the difference between a mouse and a tablet of this year. Uh, let me see. Yeah, here it is, right here. So this, this was January of this year. This was before I had a tablet. Way before I had a tablet. Uh, here, Lucy, I can show you real quick. <laughs> and then... Oh, yeah, I, I comment. Yeah, and then on like November, on November, that was after I got a tablet. Yeah. Like, this was after I got a tablet, and I decided to rework on the base again. Yeah, you definitely, like, really improved with your shading and, like, directional light, too. And the anatomy is way better. I feel like I made the anatomy a bit more rounder. like just Yeah, it's a bit more voluptuous. Yeah, which is something that I consistently go for whenever I am drawing Alexis, because I, I honestly have a figure like that, and I mm -hmm. do my best to, I guess, reference off of my own body figure to make it yeah. work. Yeah, I, I know this a lot, like, it seems like whatever gender you are, it seems like it's easier to draw the same gender. Yeah. I'm not going to lie. Females have always been easy. Females yeah, I'm really good easy. at drawing females. <laughs> Guys are hard. <laughs> well, that's mostly because they have, like, much more broad... They have, like, much more broad shoulders, more... um more squarish kind of figures, mm -hmm. I suppose. Yeah, like, I do try to, I try to think of, like, uh, girls as, like, hourglass and guys as, like, you know, top, you have, like, upside down triangles, and then you have, like, a rectangle, a long ways rectangle for, yeah. like, the body. And then when it comes to women, they have, like, all kinds of body shapes, like, there's an apple, there's a pear, there's the hourglass, mm -hmm. there's um, an oval, like, with, like there's like all kinds of women's body shape but i am mostly familiar with hourglass because i have mm -hmm. an hourglass and i can't yeah. help but want to reference my body like my, my body whenever i draw alexis because i physically have an hourglass mm -hmm. and i and honestly i am doing my best to start getting used to chubby characters because i have a couple characters one of them belongs to a friend who has a chubby character and then mm -hmm. there's my Final Fantasy 15, uh, Amelia, and she's mm -hmm. and she's a bit of a chubby, like a chunky bunny herself. So yeah, I'm, I'm kind I, of trying to for, work with that. Yeah, for me, like I'm uh I'm chubby, but like I don't know. I think like I try to avoid drawing chubbier characters <laughs> because it was just like you know boggy image issues. I think. <laughs> There was actually an attempt I made for um, for drawing a chubby character. Uh, I'm not sure if you know a Final Fantasy 15. But, I um, may have. But when when Prompto was a wee little baby, he used to be a he used to be chubby when he was a kid, and so. Oh, I, oh yeah, yeah, I remember yeah, that. He was a chubby bum. Yeah, and he was so cute, and so that was actually my first attempt in making a character look chubby. Aww. And I kind of did this little thing where I wanted to do this little dreamy sort of look, where it just kind of looked mm -hmm. like, um, you know, like what it would have looked like had they met as kids. Aww, that's cute. 
because here's the thing uh Amelia was actually a science experiment and that's why she has like those circular scars on her arm oh and because here's the thing Amelia she is actually a reincarnation of a scientist's dead wife and this oh. scientist was attempting to bring her back to life and those circular scars were actually tubes that were implanted into her skin which were meant to give nutrients which helps her age faster and e. and unfortunately um amelia she stopped right at the age of 16 when in actuality she's two years old and she uh like the scientist was caught in what she was doing in what this uh in what he was doing because he took away very confidential information just to bring his wife back and mm -hmm. so then amelia was just left out on the dust uh in a random rural area and um a, a chocobo farmer found her and just took her in and so mm -hmm. so now uh Amelia, she kind of doesn't have any childhood memory. She doesn't have anything like Prompto does. What she does have, though, is that she has these circular scars and she had no idea where they came from. And then for the rest of the story, she kind of just aged naturally. Mm hmm. So, uh, so yeah, oh. that picture alone was kind of supposed to be a little dreamlike to where what it would have been like had they met as kids and maybe things would have been different and it was kind of supposed to be a little sad but yeah um someone said link uh technically for me males and females are depending on the circumstances would be a lot easier on a certain day i'm just saying that humans are pretty much difficult to draw yeah they are i'm <laughs> a little chubby myself but i don't see drawing skinny characters make me feel better to be honest when i see skinny characters i kind of see a different character i don't focus on the bad parts yeah I mean, to be honest, whenever I see an artist, like, draw an originally chubby character into a skinny character, I can't help but feel like it's not just an artistic choice. I mean, it really just depends on their art style. Because if it's because if their art style is like that, then yeah, it's an artistic choice. But I think another reason why they would do that is because it's it's a it's a step out of a comfort zone that they are not used to and mm -hmm. because when because when you are drawing chubby characters you have to draw like a lot of roundness you have to draw certain um like folds of skin and mm -hmm. if you are not chubby yourself it's um it's kind of hard to know where all of it is at but yeah I personally think that if you are going to draw a character that is originally and canonly a chubby character, just do your best to make them chubby. Don't don't make them skinny unless there's a damn good reason. Because yeah, I can I can kind the, of it just kind of takes away the original design. I can kind of understand that, but like being big myself, it didn't really bother me much when I saw people do that because like I was just like oh they probably can't draw it because like I can't even draw big people <laughs> I I can't even draw but I'm still trying I'm, I'm still doing everything yeah. I can to at least make it work yeah like mm. I mean I'm trying to go outside of my comfort zone and draw bigger girls like mm -hmm. I'm I'm very slowly trying to like make my girls curvier mm-hmm but, like, it's just a little hard because, like, you're like, what fold goes where and how do I make this look good without being offensive? <laughs> right. Honestly, I think I need to draw Amelia a bit more often just so I can actually get used to the idea of drawing a chubby character because I, mm -hmm. I feel like it would help out a lot. Um, someone said, Harsh, are you drawing with mouse or tablet on MS Paint? I draw on both. I, I use both the... I use both the tablet and a mouse. It's it's not an in-between. But I am going to show you techniques on how uh, you can do MS Paint on both mouse and tablet. One over the other. I mean, for me, I use both. Because I use my tablet for sketching. 
and then I use my mouse for lining and coloring. Uh, I want to learn backgrounds. I mean, I, I just started drawing on backgrounds. I've only done it once. And somehow it turned out okay. I don't know how the fuck it did, but it did. Yeah. I've done, like, two successful backgrounds in my entire art career, I think. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. Backgrounds, they're, they're a bit of a pain in the ass, but, um... I, I I still want to do my best to work on backgrounds because I want to learn perspective. Yeah. I want to learn how to do perspective properly. I'm pretty sure I can show off my first attempt at a background, and this is it right here. Ooh. This was my very first attempt at a background, and I'll show you too, Lucy. Yee. Um... You, you've seen this already, but here it is, right here. Oh, yeah, I really liked that. Yeah, that was my first time working on a background. <laughs> now that I think about it, Split's kind of starting to remind me of the Crooked Man. Oh, my God. <laughs> it's just because the neck angle? But I mean, like... <laughs> trying to make it seem like she was like they were tilting their heads so it's fine I oh no it. i can see it mm -hmm. it's just like it's kind of remind like the crooked man's neck is like fucking upside down like right. you can see she's tilting her head <laughs> uh let me see draw on paper take a picture of it and trace it over on ms Paint. you know what i actually used to do that i actually used to do that but now i don't do it as much anymore unless i am like extremely proud of an original piece that I drew myself without a base. I still fucking do that. <laughs> yeah. I've got like five, six different sketchbooks mm -hmm. like on my shelf mm -hmm. that like I've just drawn in over the years. Right. Okay. So first thing that we are going to be going over is the hair. Now I kind of noticed that when it comes to base works, a lot of the people who draw on hair, it's usually considered a pain in the ass. Because mm -hmm. sometimes hair... Now, um, here's the thing that a lot of people do not under... Like, do not get. And I know that it bugs people because they, they typically think this way. But I'm just going to tell you guys right now, hairstyles do not have to be symmetrical. They do not have to be symmetrical. Do not worry about whether or not a certain piece of hair is symmetrical to the other side or not. Mm -hmm. Because all hair is different. As long as it is pleasing to both you and your viewers when you show it off, then make it as asymmetrical as possible. The best example that I can really give is Alexis and her hair. Her hair is extremely asymmetrical. Like, mm -hmm. it is, like, one part of her hair is completely overbalanced, and the other is, like, underbalanced. But that's the whole point. She is supposed to look like that. And the best way that I balanced it out is by giving her her side hairs, basically the hairs that come off from over her shoulders. Like here, I'm pretty mm -hmm. sure I can, I can show you what I'm talking about. Uh, let me see, because I know I have a good example. Um, I know I have a really good example somewhere, somewhere, mm -hmm. somewhere. But as long as there is a decent balance then there is absolutely nothing wrong with it like yeah there's not going to be like here okay so you see how it is extremely asymmetrical with her hair right here it is overly balanced on this side and then on this side there's very little and so that's why when you bring in the side hairs right here it gives that balance back, which is why 
you shouldn't worry about whether or not uh, the hairstyle is symmetrical or not. As long as there is a decent balance and it looks pleasing, then you don't have to worry about symmetry at all. Mm -hmm. uh, same goes for faces. They look better when not completely symmetrical. Yeah, that really depends. That, that, that really depends, though. Because, um, you see, the thing is, in our society, what is considered attractive is symmetrical uh, portions. And one of the most incredibly attractive features is a symmetrical face. Mm -hmm. And so um, it really just depends on the angle that you are going for. Then the facial structure and expression does not have to be symmetrical in any way, shape, or form. But if you are doing a profile where it's like they're staring straight at you, then yeah, you may need to worry about symmetry just a little bit. Honestly, mm -hmm. what really gets me the most is the fucking eyes. The eyes. Oh just, my god. Jesus yeah. Christ. Honestly, giving Alexis bangs. The reason why I did that is so I wouldn't is so I would have an excuse to not draw the other eye. <laughs> oh my god, yeah. I used to just only draw one eye, like regardless, back when I was a kid. Yeah. And like <laughs> Even if they didn't have, like, a fringe or anything to cover the other eye, it would just be, like, all shadowed or something. Mm-hmm. Uh, let me see. Okay, so first, we are going to trace over a hair by the usage of a tablet, okay? So, what I normally do is I get a base color right here. And these base colors that I get right here, they give me... A, a sense of direction. They give me the direction that I need to know where everything is. Now, normally, I norm I just go with one color, but if you want to use different colors just to make things easier for you, you can. Uh, just so long as you uh, keep that sort of stuff organized and you know where everything is and what those placements are meant for, then you should be fine. Normally, I just do uh, one color because it kind of it's kind of easier to just have everything on one color if you know where everything is at. Mm -hmm. Sure, it does get a little cluttered and really just blah, but it still helps regardless. So let's right. say, for example, you want to draw hair. Uh, normally, I would start around here. I would start around this area right here. That's normally where the bangs would usually start anyways. And then, you know, you have this area, which is where the eyes are supposed to be. So as long as you have a decent um, place of the eyes. And you know what? Sometimes a base with eyes, they can help you. Sometimes when you have a base that has eyes, they can help you. Like, for example, um, we have... We have this base right here. This sort of base right here has eyes. And normally, I would let the eyes be my guide. I would let them help me where everything is placed on a face. And so where the eyes are at, depending on how big you want to make the head, they would normally start at least right here right around here and then you kind and then because of how dynamic the pose of this base is you pretty much can just have your hair be all over the fucking place and i will i will show off uh, dynamic hair poses in a sec so yeah there's that so now we get back to this sort of base where it's basically like a mannequin sort of uh base Will you save the stream so people look back to learn your MS Paint tutorials? Yes, I will. I will. I promise you that. So, and so now there is also the there's also the idea of layers. Now in MS Paint, you don't have layers. You don't have layers at all. You have to make your own layers. And the only way that you can really make your own layers is if you take this base color 
and then you have a secondary color. Your secondary color should be the lighter shade of your base color, which is pink. And so you take that base color, you right click, and voila, you basically have the line art being in that secondary color without that secondary color just you know being all like just like that no nah. you <laughs> won't you won't need to worry about that so and trust me when i say that these two and right clicking they are your best friends they are in all honesty your best friends when it comes to um when it comes to like drawing out what like dracing out what you're trying to do and then you know you have uh all that you need like right there all right so now let's start off with the hair so normally what i would do is i would start at a certain point and then i would just start tracing i would just start tracing what you want now normally depending on the hairstyle some can be fluffy some cannot some can be big some can be thin it really just depends on how you treat hairs if you want your hair to be thin then just trace it out like it's thin if you want it to look thick then just make it look like it's thick just like that there is no in between i mean yeah there is an in between but normally it really just depends on how thick or thin you want the hair to look uh, if you want to, if you want to do like loose strands and all that stuff, um, uh, normally loose strands, what I would normally do is I would draw out the, like the normal hair and depending on what kind of loose strand you're looking for, you can do something like this, you can do it when it's like right in front, or I can just, I trace out another part of the hair and it would look something like this where it's like the normal sort of like oh the hair looks like it's pulling apart but it's it's staying intact with the other piece of hair something along huh. the lines of that now normally i would draw my hair i would draw hair looking thick but depending on what kind of hairstyle it is I will have I will draw the hair thin so like say for example there's Alexis and her hair she has really mm -hmm. thick hair she she has thick hair and so her the front the fr like the first two pieces of her hair they're thin but then after that she has thick hair she has thick pieces of hair right and it's because it's all just kind of collided together and all that stuff and then you know uh this is the typical hairstyle that she has where it's kind of like a little bit of a because here's the thing this hairstyle was inspired by um you know like emo culture it was inspired mm -hmm. by um it was inspired by like emo and scene culture and i kind of just wanted to put my own little twist in it by making it look all poofy like kind of mm -hmm. a little bit poofy and so so it's like a so it's like a mix of like uh emo and scene kind of somewhat yeah and then you have and so here it is this is the imbalance that i was talking about but uh when you add in the side hairs that she has it gives back that balance that was originally a problem because now um because now if you decide to do like these kinds of side hairs the most the most uh realistic way to do it is to make it look like it's resting on the shoulders like like there's a little bit of indent right there on the shoulders to where it's like all collided and crowded on the shoulders and then the rest uh, depending on how thick or thin the hair is uh you make all that either thick or thin and depending on it will really depend on the number of hairs that are typically seen on the shoulder 
parts. And then, you know, you go down, uh, and then you just start drawing the actual back of the hair. You see, the hair has three layers. There's the bangs, there's the side hairs, and then there's the back hair. And I normally start off with the bangs, and then the side hair, and then the back hair. Because then I actually know where everything is. And then, you know, you make your character's hair as long or as short as you want. Uh, I normally do this kind of hairstyle because it's, it's more natural and more controllable for me. But if you want to do short hair... Uh, there are plenty of short hair ideas, like there's there's the pixie, like there's the pixie style, uh, there's even curls and all that stuff. You know, just like your typical short hair sort of style that you normally see. Um, now, I'm not very good at short hair. Well, I am, it's just, it kind of has to be like something looking straight otherwise it's gonna look weird to me I'm still working on making curly hairs but I'll get to that I will I I, I just need to practice a bit more on curly hair so this is how you would normally sketch everything out and this is only for a tablet only now when you want to do with just a mouse it's an entirely different story altogether because, let me tell you, tracing with just a mouse is a real bitch. It is the biggest pain in the ass one can actually deal with. And so, when you want to just trace with a mouse, the best thing that you can really do is keep your base color, like I said, and then you just start tracing everything out and you know you have like the sizes right here so you can choose on the uh the like the thickness of the lines and everything and you basically just trace everything out with this base color just so you would at least know where everything is at the very least and if you want you can go back and you can use a separate color and you can correct. You can correct anything that you feel needs to be corrected. You can you can basically correct like anything that you think feels off. And there are even times where like when you trace or like you start working on the line work, you kind of notice that there are like these little pockets right here, like these little pixelated pockets. I normally color these in because they're a pain in the ass to color in for one because here's the thing that you need to know about MS Paint it's the fact that every pixel matters because you're not you're not fucking with things like uh, Photoshop or Psy you're fucking with things that revolve around pixel art because that's what MS Paint is it's pixel art it's a pixel art program and so basically if you see like any of those little pockets it's usually a good idea to color it in just so you would at least have a decent uh, not just balance but it also kind of looks pretty because then you have like this little this little edge thing where mm -hmm. there's like a portion of it that looks filled in and looks a little more complete and all that stuff so yeah um, it's it's completely different with the mouse, but with uh, a tablet, it's a lot easier to trace and make shapes with because it's basically like you're drawing on a piece of paper, only you're not. You... Now, here's the thing. I feel like I am much more fluid with how my base works look because of the fact that I use a tablet and it's a lot easier to use. It, it really is. It's a hell of a lot easy to use, and I love it. I love it a lot. <laughs> okay, so now the next thing we are going to be looking at is uh, looking over bases like this. 
So say for example, you come across a base that you really, 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 really want to use, but it's not a PNG base because that's what a lot of these bases are. They are all PNG. In other words, they are, um, they are MS Paint compatible. This image, however, is not. It is a JPEG. It is a JPEG to where the lines and everything look blurry and they are just not usable. And I'm sure that it has probably frustrated a lot of people when they come across bases like this, especially when they feel like they have to color in every single pixel just to make it look good, when really you do not have to do that. You really do not have to do that. All you really need to do is just trace over this entire like this like this entire image or what you want out of that image. And depending on what you do with it, there are two ways to go about this. There's the easy way and then there's the long way. Now, here's what I mean by the easy way. The easy way is where you color your entire line art black. Okay. And then you hit select and then you invert the color. After that, you go to properties, you click black and white, say okay. And then you go back to properties, click color again, invert the color, and there you are. There's there's your line art right there. There's your line art. Clean, crisp line art. All of it right there. You, you don't even need to worry about the image anymore because it is all right there. So now let me show you the long way. <laughs> and, I, and I promise you guys, the long way is a real pain in the, in the ass. It really <laughs> is. Okay, so. No offense, can't you convert to a PNG? It doesn't work that way. It, it, it doesn't work that way. It, it sadly doesn't. Because the image is going to stay the same even if you convert it to a PNG. It doesn't work that way. So, so here is your image. Your base color, say for example, it's red. All right. So you go to file, you save as, and then you press BMP picture. Now you have two options. You have 24-bit color bitmap, and then you have your 16-color bitmap. You click on 16-color and then you start erasing all of the black outlines until you are left with your red outline. Like just all of this right here. Just every single outline. And this is why I say that this is kind of the long way because depending on how complex and colorful the picture that you are tracing over it can actually, it, like, there are a lot, like, there is a, a huge range of colors. It's not just the uh, black and white and gray, like, nah. It, there are yellows, there are reds, there are blues, there are purples. It just depends on how, uh, it really just depends on how colorful your picture is. So, yes. you still get the image that you wanted, but it's with your base color. You do not have to color your entire line art black if you do not want that. If you still want to keep your base art... Oh, hold on just a sec. I am sorry about that. My mom came in. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so you do not have to color your entire line art black to make this happen as well. 
because if you really want to keep your base colors well you have to use certain color palettes to make this work for example you have your red and then everything else has to be neon otherwise it's not going to work so you have your neon yellow you have your neon uh uh green you got your blue like the most harshest blue that you can think of and then you know you got your purples basically all these colors right here they are very likely to stand that bitmap uh save file and then after that depending on uh your line art and what you want with it they will stay they will stay but the image itself well, you have to erase everything just to just to, you know, make it all look good. And typically this is how uh base makers do it. This is this is actually how bases are typically made. They are they are made through this sort of a uh, through this uh, sort of a uh, what is it? This sort of a uh, I have no idea process. what the fuck I'm talking about. Yeah, process. Because believe it or not, making bases, um, like these sorts of a base, like I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you all this right now. Making bases is a long process. It is so <laughs> long. It is such a long process. I can't even begin to tell you how frustrated I tend to get. <laughs> um, over making a base <laughs> not only that but it can also be a little frustrating when i have to uh fix bases because sometimes there are some bases that do need fixing and then mm -hmm. there are some bases that don't really need fixing but they still need a bit of a touch-up right um like for example um uh, i have this base right here I fixed that, um, and then uh, this was the original base right here. It was kind of messy, looked a little sloppy, but then I went and I fixed it. Arsh, Jada is trying to get your attention. <laughs> <sighs> Hi, Jada. Good to see you. It's like, text me back. <laughs> I'm sorry. I've also kind of been all over the place today, and this is like the one night, like this is like the couple hours that I get free time and shit, because of course my mom is on my ass about getting a job, and I am actively looking for one, and not only that, but I forgot you replied, so yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so that is how you can actually, like for those who actually take pictures, and they want to work with their like their picture like okay they want to put the picture that they drew on their notebook to ms paint those two methods are the only ways that you can actually make it work and actually uh make it look good uh all right so now we have ourselves this dynamic base right here we have ourselves a bit of a we have ourselves a bit of a dynamic base right here. Oh come on, Jada. <laughs> I love her. <laughs> <laughs> so she's a sweetie pie. She is. What? Jada, you forgot to reply to today. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> but <laughs> I love her. But <laughs> so here we have ourselves a dynamic sort of base art right here. Now normally dynamic dynamic base arts they are a little hard, but I can promise you that they do help a lot, not just with uh hair and clothes, but they also help with um they can help with poses and a little bit of perspective so say for example we have this um so say we have like this sort of pose right here um 
Now what I normally, now, okay. Normally what I like to do to help make the base look a little bit more like my style of sorts is I basically just, I make everything white. Like just, just basically mute all colors. You do the same thing that I showed you where you take the base color, you make the secondary color white, you right click, and you're basically erasing like the entire color that you want to erase from the primary. So you take all that, you take all that away, you completely erase like all the colors that are in the base. And then you take your, if you have a tablet, you take your pencil and you start sketching everything out. But mouse users, you take your cool, your curve tool and you start tracing out what needs to be fixed. So like say for example, uh, the facial structure doesn't look right. If you want to make her chin look a little bit longer and less, uh, less roundish, then you basically trace out a more angular like, uh, a more angular like chin. And then you basically get this as a result. If you want to make something along the lines of that. And you know, if you, uh, I feel like if you also have a good grasp of anatomy, you can also make it look good with that. I do my best to make my anatomy look good, but even then it still kind of sucks major shit because I, I need to practice on it more. I, 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 mm. I know I need to. But, um, originally I was going to use this, um, to make a sort of, a devil man themed picture because uh my girl Aiko she is possessed by a snake demon and one of the things that she likes to do is make her mouth unhinge ooh she makes she takes her uh she 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 makes her mouth unhinge that's basically one of her abilities is that she can make her mouth unhinge and therefore she can she is able to swallow things whole if she wants to, just like a normal snake would. But that really depends if she is in her full form. If she is not, then she can still unhinge her jaw. It's just she can't swallow things whole. She still has to chew like a normal human being. Um, so there's that. Uh, this was a picture that I was originally going to do. But here's the thing, I couldn't make the mouth unhinge like a normal snake would because I didn't have a tablet. I wasn't really able to make it look good no matter what I did, so I kind of put this aside for another time when I feel like I am uh, capable of doing it. Because here's the thing, there is nothing wrong with setting future projects aside if uh, you feel you can't do it, or if you feel unconfident in doing it. And so, um, it is okay to set your projects aside for another time and build up your skills for another time. It is perfectly okay to do that. And there is absolutely no shame in doing that. In fact, if you, um, if you want to set aside something else for another time that is completely up to you if you want to use maybe another art program try metabang or pts uh i don't know i am like extremely comfortable with uh ms paint to the point where i don't think i want to do any other program besides ms paint so <laughs> i i do appreciate the suggestion though it really means a lot, but I, I I think I'm just way too comfortable with uh, MS Paint to really want to be on other programs. And I know to some extent that's bad, but at the same time, it's okay to be a master of programs that, you know, people don't really use anymore. It's, it's, it's fine by that. Um, so now... We have ourselves uh, one final piece to show, and it is what a fixed base look likes, 
like what like what a fixed base would look like if you were to use a tablet now i'm pretty sure that if i were to use a mouse it would still be the same sort of um it would still be the same sort of result only it would probably look a little disproportionate or things would look a little bit i guess um like i guess a little bit uh more full and kind of thick in like the wrong kind of places not only that but there is also some anatomy fixes that i did this is actually a picture that i plan on working on for a future video it will be featured in a speed paint and you guys will definitely see the progress of it once i get to it for now i just need to work on the scripting process and just get that shit all done and so here is where you can see some of the anatomy fixes for example there's the chin looking a little bit more i guess angular slightly rounded but still kind of angular there's the there's the uh the nose there's the eyes the lips obviously um the the fingers look a little bit slim there's the collarbone right here the boobs don't look like they're being squished they look natural they look like natural boobs uh the waist is a little bit smaller hips are a bit wider thighs are a little thighs are the same and whenever you want to fix a base it is okay to fix the base to your style it is to your style and i do my best to uh like to just put in my style uh whenever i do work on bases because yes the pose isn't mine by any mean but the art style is mine like you can still tell that it that it is my art style even with the uh the usage of a base and honestly because of bases i found my art style this way I, I actually kind of found my art style. It's just the problem when I do work on like like independent artwork without uh without a base, I uh well I just don't know where everything is and then everything looks kind of fucked up. So that's why I use bases. It's because I do not know like I, I have a bit of a good grasp on anatomy, it's just I don't know where everything is. And it's kind of it's kind of tedious. It's tedious, but that's how it normally is. So, if you guys have any questions, any at all, about how you would normally work with bases, feel free to start uh, sending questions in the chat, and I will answer as many questions as I possibly can for the next 30 minutes. I will even start, I will even show you how uh, I normally draw clothes because I do know that clothes can also be a real pain in the ass. Not only that, but I'm pretty sure Lucy can also give a little bit of advice because she was a base artist herself. So some of the shit that she has told me, she kind of knows what she's talking about. And she was a, a she was an MS Paint user herself. Uh, you sound quiet on me. I can't hear you. I can't hear you, Ami. You suddenly went mute. Ah, uh, okay. But, yes, if you guys have any sort of questions, feel free to ask, and I will gladly answer them. Uh, like, I will gladly answer them. Can you hear me now? Yes, now I can hear you. No. Settings. Wait, can you not hear me? No. Yeah, I can hear you. Oh, can there you hear is. me? Yeah, I can hear you. Oh, thank God. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was like, can she not hear me? I was so scared for a second. <laughs> oh my God. How do you come up with bases, like the design of it, the height, etc.? Well, here's the thing. Bases, they normally come from original they they come from uh pictures they come from fan art 
official art. That's where a lot of bases typically come from. Yes, there are original bases out there. There, like, it's not just traced bases. There are actually some. There are actually some bases where uh, they are actually original. But in this case, uh, a lot of base works are typically traced. They are typically traced base. And like this, for example, this is a traced base of this. This was a Love Live uh, base that I kind of transformed and kind of made it look a little more uh, like, I guess, grown woman-ish, I suppose. So, there's that. Um, I believe there might be some who might be wondering how I color, but, uh, Ami, do you have any pieces of advice that you would like to give to our audience right here? Uh, yeah, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, good. Um, so basically from what i've learned uh you kind of have to find a light direction mm -hmm. in your uh art because like from what i've experienced is like if you have your um shading in like multiple different areas and like you don't really have a direction of where you're shading, it doesn't look good. Mm -hmm. But, um, gosh. <laughs> okay. uh, you're doing fine. I'm like, I don't know what to say. <laughs> no, you are okay. Uh, you are perfectly fine. Uh, uh, yes, light direction. Thank you. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yes, just the just the light direction in, in, in the artwork. And just... Mm, uh, like um, direction, okay. like explaining uh, that? Well, it's like, okay, let's say, like, you have a person, and they are, like, at the beach, and it's sunset, right? Mm -hmm. So, like, you're going to, you're going to want, like, let's say that they're facing, like, hmm, how do I put this? You're okay. It's like half of them is facing towards the sun and the other half of them is like facing away from the sun, right? So like the one side of them, you're going to want to be like, you're going to want to have the light source on that one side. And then the other side, you're going to want to be like completely shaded. Mm -hmm. I have no idea if that made any sense. <laughs> no, no, it, it actually did. Um, here, I'm pretty sure I can show you a current work in progress of what I am doing right now. Uh, it was kind of supposed to be a cute little comic that I, that I am doing. Okay, so, when it comes to light direction, this is what, uh, Lucy was trying to say. So, how I normally color my bases, I normally start off, like, with the line art. I normally start off with, like, the darker tone of the color is on the outside the lighter tone is on the inside i i have been doing that for a while now because i think it kind of makes things look pretty i don't know why i just think it makes things look pretty and so mm -hmm. you take a base color and the reason why i use these base colors is so i can know where everything is because depending mm -hmm. on how light and how dark the uh the color is i can't see the original shade that i am using so sometimes i need a base color to help me see where everything is so you take this base color right here you color it all in you know you do all that and then you take the secondary color right click and then bam it's it's shaded and then you know when you want to add and here's the thing when you want to make your shaded picture of ms paint look as though you use the fade tool or the or like the smudge tool or something you have to do it individually in layers like you have to you have to make it look faded by hand you can't 
because you do not have a smudge tool or any of that stuff to make it look good for you. You have to do it by hand. Mm -hmm. And it takes a lot of time and dedication, but I promise you that the results will be worth all the hard work. Because as long as you uh as long as you do good with your shades and you continue to uh you know like just make it light lighter and lighter and lighter until it actually looks like the skin color that you are using then i promise you it, it will actually look good it it will it will actually look good like see there it is right there it is honestly starting to look like it is slowly becoming like the skin color that i am using on this right there yeah i really like that that looks good yeah and so this this whole thing that's something that you have to do by hand yeah see that's why i'm so impressed with your art <laughs> wait seriously i i just mm, i just do it by hand because i'm just that used to it mm -hmm. and if you want to go for a darker shade you can because sometimes a darker shade can actually look pretty good uh depending on what you're doing uh what i would normally do for a darker shade is i would normally uh take the inner skin color and then I would lighten it up a little bit, and then, voila, it just kind of looks like that. And if you want to go lighter, you can. It just depends on how it looks to you. If It just really depends on how it looks to you. If you think that it didn't look good, then go lighter or go darker until it does look good to you. Because the thing is, uh, the way it looks... Uh, from a certain angle or the way it looks from a certain distance it kind of matters because if you want to give off this illusion that uh there was like a fucking smudge tool you used or some shit you need to actually work your fucking ass off to do it all by hand otherwise it's it's just not gonna look good at all mm -hmm. and it's just gonna look weird as shit so you really gotta like work at it you gotta work at it like really 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 work at it and <laughs> it can honestly bases with how i work with bases they can take me they can take me to a couple days to hours to an entire week and I mean, hell, depending on how complex and how many people and characters that are in a base, they they can take me weeks to finish. Oh, it, wow. can, it can take me weeks to finish because of how detail oriented I am towards the base. Like I want I am a perfectionist. Like I I am a perfectionist. <laughs> I, I, I can't help it. If it doesn't look perfect to me, I am going to flip my shit. <laughs> I am going to flip yeah, my shit. Yeah, you said that earlier. <laughs> yeah, because I, I, I hate it when something doesn't look the way I want it to. And mm -hmm. then I get mad, and I get cranky, and I get all... You know, like, I, I'm just like... <laughs> and then I start getting fucking frustrated over it. I really do. I'm literally just so like, why the fuck is it not turning out this way? <laughs> um, does anyone else have any questions? Yeah, like, if you guys have any questions that you guys want me to answer, feel free to ask them now. Because otherwise, um, wasn't there something else uh, I brought up where it was like... Oh, right, there was clothes, and then there was dynamic hairstyles. Okay. Yeah. That's right. I almost forgot clothes. So when it comes to clothes, uh, now, depending on 
the clothes that you are looking at. I look at references now and then, but I also try to make up my own sort of clothes. So Same. here's what you would normally do with uh, underwear. With underwear, it's a bit of a huge pain in the ass. Because if it's a girl, well, you kind of mostly have to just draw the bra. And honestly, the bras are really not all that hard. Because all you really got to do is just draw the cups and just make them, like, just kind of make them look like they are, like, they're not touching, like, they're not just being all up on the boob. Like, just give the boob air. Like, the mm-hmm. boob needs air now and then. Like, <laughs> Jesus Christ. I shit you not. The amount of times that I have seen bras being all up on the boob and not give it any amounts of air fucking yeah. drives me up the damn wall because I'm like, yo, you're crowding the boobie. The girl needs new bras if that's the case. Right? Like, how is she breathing? <laughs> Yeah, like, no, I'm I'm being for real when I say that when you draw bras, give the girl's damn boobies some air. <laughs> like, give the damn, like, bro, bro, give her two scoops of Haagen-Dazs French vanilla boobies some air, okay? <laughs> <laughs> like, give them air. Oh, Holy God. shit, I cannot stress this enough. Oh, <laughs> um, like seriously, uh, this is a basic idea of how a bra should look. If you want a strapless bra, here is how a strapless bra basically looks. And again, give the boobies air. I, I, I need to stop repeating myself. Okay, so now, we, so now we get to the panties. Depending on the panties, uh, normally you would see things like this you know like just normal bikini bottom panties or thongs it's whatever you want to do i normally do thongs because they're they're less pain of the ass to draw now Mm -hmm. when you draw panties it is important that you do this little indent right here this little indent Mm -hmm. right here you can't just fucking draw fucking panties and then not expect the like a bit of squish action to happen you know what i'm saying like you need squish action to happen otherwise you're basically just gonna make it look like oh yeah she just has fucking panties and she like her her fucking body isn't even reacting to it it's 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 like Mm -hmm. fucking solid concrete it's just it's not (laughs) even it's not even like human flesh it's just fucking concrete like, no, yeah. you gotta show some squish action to show that her panties are, in fact, snug. Like, they are <laughs> snug in there. And they right. are, like, like, yeah. And depending mm-hmm. on how big and thick her, like, how dummy thick her her thighs <laughs> are, or her <laughs> hips, you gotta make the squish action, like, really fucking detailed, too. Like, you can't, oh, just, you can't just make it look like her body is nothing but solid concrete. Like, no, you gotta, like, just fucking squish it all in there. Like a marble statue in the fucking yeah. <laughs> museum. Yeah, like, she ain't, no, she ain't no fucking Statue of Liberty where she's made out of fucking copper. Like, nah, she, she's a damn human being. Just like how you well, got, like, okay, here's the thing, here's a little tip to keep in mind. Give the boobies air, but squish the but damn squish panties, it. like, in hips. <laughs> it's okay, it's okay to give okay. those haagen French vanilla boobies air. It's okay, but for the panties, make them snug. Now, unless it's a swimsuit, then, yeah, of course make the boobies snug. Like, of course do that, because the whole point of a swimsuit is to look snug. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, you got your fucking thong action right here. You got yeah. this sort of bullshit right here. Right fucking here. And then, you know, you just gotta... And the, and the rules still apply. You gotta fucking just fucking squish it right there. Like, just make it look all squishy. Just look all mm-hmm. squishy. Especially when her hips are dummy thick. Like, you can't, 
Like, you can't just make it just not fucking react to being hugged. Because literally, mm. the way that you draw it, you gotta, you gotta make it look like the fabric is hugging her body. Like, it is hugging her body. And that mm -hmm. is mostly what you can do when it comes to underwear. Now, mm -hmm. it's okay to look at references for underwear because I know underwear can be a real pain in the ass. It, it fucking Especially sucks. Especially if it's really. Uh, I have a question about how you plan the bases. Do you have a certain character in mind when you do these bases or not? Uh, I do. I, I, uh, like, the only reason why I have... Uh, all these bases in my folder is because there's an idea that I have in mind for it. It's either that or I think it looks pretty. Uh, and I'm probably never going to use it. Uh, any advice for drawing hands? Hands suck. That's my <laughs> advice. Hands suck. But uh, no, in all seriousness, it really... I I use I use the bases for hands because the the hands on bases they are actually a really good guide to help me. So say for example, you you're not very good at drawing hands, but bases they have a decent hand that you want to use. I would let that hand be your guide and help you figure out whether or not you want the hands to look fat as fuck like sausages or thin like needles. It really just depends on what you want to do. Um, Costa says, any tip on using the squiggly line tool? Any tip on using the squiggly line tool? Well, um, basically, the whole point of the squiggly line tool is to start a line the first time, and then the second and third line are refining that very line. And so if you want to make something look nice and squiggly, just do that. Or if you want to make it look a certain angle, you start off a line like perpendicular or some shit. And then you just start off this way. And then you start off that way. And the same thing goes for the other side too. Just meh, meh, meh. Something like that. Uh, I promise you the squiggly line tool is really not that complicated. It's just, if you do, if you have no need for, uh, if you have no need for, like, the third fucking thing, then just don't fucking worry about it. What I would normally do just to cancel the fucking thing is just fucking click on the straight line thing. Just, meh, there you go. And then, like, like the straight line thing, just, meh, that's the straight line right there. Like, say, for example... Uh, this looks good, and so does this, but I'm done with it. What I would normally do is I would just click on the fucking straight line, and then go back to the curve tool, and then I just start all over again, like that. Because I <laughs> promise you that you don't need, really need to fucking worry about the damn third part of the curve tool if you don't fucking need it. So, uh, there's that. Um, tips, uh, any more tips when it comes to the squiggly line tool? Uh... Well, if you are looking to draw clothes with the squiggly line tool, make sure you have a lot of fucking references, otherwise it's gonna look wonky as shit and it's not gonna look right. Because depending <laughs> on the damn angle, it's just it's just not gonna look all that great. And that's how my bases in the old days looked. Like they they legit looked like complete and total shit. <laughs> Uh, Thiefy Chan wants to marry you, apparently. Oh, I'm spoken for for Seto Kaiba. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, but nah. Um, oh, someone said, Har should be a fun art teacher, to be honest. Humorous, but educated. I mean, I, I try to make mm -hmm. my education. Here's the thing, when I... When I do an like an explanation, I can't tell but want to be funny about it. Because here's the thing, humor, when you add humor into education, it's a lot easier to remember something. It's a mm -hmm. lot easier to remember something when you add humor into it. So <laughs> with that, um now here. Uh, let me see if I can find a good base that
that I used that was only with the squiggly line tool. Ah, okay, I found a good base that would, like, not a good base, but a good base art that I did with just a mouse and the squiggly line tool. This was all just on mouse. Now, yes, some things about it look kind of wonky, but as you can see, this was mostly done with just mouse, with just the squiggly line tool alone. And, you know, like some other shit that I showed you how to do. And I honestly plan on remaking it in the future, because I feel like if I were to use a tablet, it would look much better than whatever the fuck this is. Because in all honesty, <laughs> I think it kind of looks like shit, but I tried. I mean, the shading's still really good, though. I mean, I guess. I, I, I guess it looks okay. Um, okay. This is perhaps the last and only time I've ever done something with just a fucking mouse. After a bit, I then got myself a tablet, and it has been easier for me ever since. This was... Ooh. This was the last and only time I only used a mouse for this. Dang, that's pretty. Everything else, everything else after that was uh, a tablet. And I think the experimental stage of actually drawing something with my tablet was that Alexis Cipher picture that I drew for my Sav Draws video. Oh, really? Yeah, that was actually the first time I actually did a project with my tablet and huh yeah that, wow yeah that picture was pretty good too <laughs> yeah i mean i thought it was okay i feel like i i feel like it could have been a little bit better but it, uh how i mean you, have... you can always go back and redraw it yeah that's true how long have you been practicing on ms paint since 2013 so for six years I have been using I have been using MS Paint for six years now. Tips on making hair not look like garbage. All I can really tell you is to fucking uh just trace it all out, whether pen or tablet. Like whether uh not tablet, not pen or tablet, uh tablet or mouse. And depending on what it is that you are going for, it will look good. It's just don't worry about symmetry worry about balance of the hair that's all you that's all you need to know i'm pretty sure i stated that in like earlier on in the fucking stream but you know mm -hmm. okay so now we have clothes uh we have like other kinds of clothes like we got shirts and shit let's get right to the fucking nitty gritty with this little fucking shit, <laughs> fucking shit. okay so say for example you want to draw some kind of fucking t-shirt, like a baggy-ass t-shirt, or just anything that's kind of baggy in general. I'm gonna tell you all of this right now, don't fucking overdo the ruffles, otherwise you're gonna look- otherwise your character's gonna look like a fucking ruffled up cream puff that <laughs> spooted everywhere. I don't think you really fucking want that. Like, you don't want to make your character Look like, look like fucking, fucking like just fucking cream on top of root beer. Cream on top. Like you don't you don't want that. <laughs> so what you want to do so when you you're making a you're baggy t-shirt is just it's like make the like make the collar look especially saggy looking like definitely saggy saggy looking and as best as you can make it look like it's a little bit bigger than it intentionally is around the collar area. And then you continue on and you make such, and like depending on the sleeve and how big it is, you can make it look big as fuck and have like a good couple ruffles here and there, like something along the lines of this, or you can make it look skinny as shit and just not, and just not have it contribute to fucking anything. And then, of course, when it comes to the boobage, you don't really have to fucking worry about the damn boobage when you are worrying about how fucking big and oversized the damn t-shirt is. <laughs> <laughs> because fuck boobies. Fuck it's boobies. all about the all damn t-shirt. Mm-hmm. So now, you gotta worry now, about the indents. 
Now, when it comes to the French vanilla boobies, you don't really need... You don't really need to fucking worry about the boobage indents, because like I said, this is a fucking oversized t-shirt. You don't need that shit. Fuck that shit. You don't need the fucking indent, indent shit. You, you really don't need that. So then what you do is now you gotta worry about the folds and the crevices. Uh, depending on the angle of the body, the crevice is in fact needed, but then in some cases it's it's not really. It's it's not it's it's fucking really not, and so you got yourself an oversized T-shirt right here, just this this big little fucking oversized T-shirt that looks like it could be your grandma's nightgown, and it looks great, doesn't <laughs> it? It looks fucking amazing. But then you also got to worry about the damn folds and where those certain folds go. Well, not to fucking worry, my little retard, because you have this right here. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm getting excited with my explanations, but I'm just trying to be funny. Um, <laughs> and so, you have all this right here. Uh, so afterwards, after you have traced over anything, both with mouse or tablet, now all you really gotta do is just, you know, just erase the inside. Just erase everything. Don't even worry about what your mom will say about it because she because then once she takes a look at it she won't she won't think that you're drawing someone naked and mm. voila there's there's your oversized t-shirt right there your your oversized t-shirt it's kind of like a short ass dress but that's about it it's like a short ass dress but mm -hmm. honestly i would wear that t-shirt Costas would apparently wear it, and I'm I'm glad he would wear it because oversized T-shirts are the best nightgowns. They really are. They really are. Like they are. They are very comfortable nightgowns. Oh my! I wear God. them all the time. Yeah, because nightgowns are the best. They are. Like, mm, I I love it. I love oversized t-shirts. Okay. So now we have ourselves. So next we got crop tops. Now normally crop tops, they are usually skin tight. They're not, they're usually not oversized. But if they are, a lot of the times you come across crop tops who that are like literally just v-necks, boobage length. And they would stop around here. Like usually right around here. Now... There are several different kinds of crop tops. For example, you got the, um, you got the, uh, what was it? The, the, the shoulderless crop top. You have the ruffles crop top. Like, you know, where like, there's like a little bit of a ruffle around the front and then it ends at a certain way. Oh yeah. Um, you have one sleeve crop top right here. Which, um, is, it, it, I think it's a cute shirt. Like, I, I honestly think it's, I honestly think it's cute. And then, you know, you mm -hmm. have the long sleeve crop top, where the long sleeve ends around here. And I actually have one of those crop tops, and it is really cute. Um, so you have these. Uh, now... When it comes to crop tops, if you want to make them, like, you know, loose or something along the lines of that, um, normally the best way to go about it is, like, you make this just, you know, like, you make the collar loose, like I said, and then uh, when it comes to your crop top, you kind of just start adding ruffles and shit upon it. Like, just, and when it comes to the boobage, don't fucking worry about it, because they don't exist. Because they don't fucking exist. <laughs> Just like how the sleeves, they are so freaking loose that it is ridiculous. So there you go. There is the loose crop top right there. And sometimes it's fun to draw, sometimes it's not. Sometimes it sucks, sometimes it's fun. It really just depends on what your character style is. Mm -hmm. Um. So now we got pants. Now normally... They are around here, 
But me, being a stupid shit, likes to fucking draw them right here. And <laughs> I'm a dumbass like that. But it really just depends on whether or not the pants are lowriders or not. Alexis, she wears lowriders. So she lets her fucking love handles and thongs show off whenever the fuck she wants. Mm-hmm. And it's just... And so what you normally do when it comes to drawing pants, depending on where the pants are, like, say, for example, they're right here, you gotta make that fucking indent. You gotta make that indent. Just look at it. Like, look at it being fucking squished like a fucking mochi. It's, it's like squeeze. Like you're squeezing it so hard. It's like you're trying to squeeze the ice cream out of a fucking mochi. It has. To, oh my god. It has to look good and tasty. And <laughs> so, and if you want panties to be poking out of them motherfuckers, well, you just you just do it. What I like to call the slut drop on them on them fucking uh, pants. And oh my God. you just show just off show them panties. Off. Just show it off. Like, yeah, there you go. <laughs> she looks like she's ready to dance. All that kind of shit. <laughs> so, yeah, there you go. You got that. So there are your pants. And it works the same way with shorts. It works the same way with shorts. Also, it is important that you add the fucking seams. Add... The seams! I cannot stress this shit enough because I constantly see people draw pants and they don't even add the fucking seams! <laughs> I shit you not! This happens all the damn time! They forget the seams! They just uh. forget it! And then you know, like, step on your right foot, don't forget it! <laughs> and then, there's also the pockets. There's the pockets you gotta worry about. There's a the fucking pockets and yes you gotta add the seams to them fuckers too you gotta do that shit you can't just fucking add pockets and be like okay that looks great no add the seams and then you know <laughs> there's the freaking uh top part where you got to freaking put in the belt loops don't forget the fucking belt loops <laughs> add the damn belt loops <sighs> Please, for the love of all that is holy, add the belt loops. And to make it even better, you know that little center thing that people that pants have like right around the crotch? Put that in there too. I don't give a mm -hmm. fuck if you make your girl look like she has a boner beneath her pants. Do it. It is realistic <laughs> and it looks like actual pants. And depending <laughs> on the kind of pants, kind you can make it look make ruffled as shit, shit or you can just make it skin tight on the motherfucker it, it don't it don't matter it don't matter because it's, it's pants <laughs> i mean, <laughs> I mean no. <laughs> damn girl <laughs> Ooh, i think we found where your passion lies <laughs> pants don't need pockets and belt i'm sorry but whoever designed that i want to slap them in the damn face because pants like that do exist legit you know what i i shit you not i want you know what i actually freaking we retweeted this tiktok video because uh the girl once did the same thing but i once accidentally bought a pair of pants where they didn't have front pockets or back pockets <laughs> and I wanted to freaking scream. I'm going to tell you this right now. I say this for everyone. We want pockets. <laughs> we want Girls pockets. can't have pockets. No, 
We oh want pockets. God. We need pockets. Otherwise, we're not going to be able to put our shit in because here's the thing. I don't do purses. Purses, they're a pain in the ass because I have to carry them around for hours and hours on end. Also, you could do fucking bell bottoms, might I add, but that's besides the point. Uh, mm -hmm. Literally, I, we need pockets. Give me pockets or I'll die. I, I, I can't. I, I, I fucking Give can't. me pockets or give me death. <laughs> Exactly. I, 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 I can't. I, I can't. I, I fucking... Mm. 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 Water break. I need to drink <laughs> water. <clears throat> okay. Ooh, you got... Yeah, I got, I got a little fucking excited there, but that's because... Uh, got a little passionate, but that's I, okay. I, listen, I'm trying to have fun with this while also educating them on this. <laughs> Like, I, I never I'm thought just, it was a bad thing. I'm just trying to get people to have fun on this stream while also trying to educate them on this shit. Oh yeah, there's leggings. Just, just fucking, just do the same goddamn thing and just fucking squish the motherfucker at the top, and then you just make them look tight as shit. Please add the damn seams, like at least on yeah, the, the one side. Yeah, the thing about leggings. The thing about leggings is the seam is on, like, the inside of the leg instead of the outside, which is weird, right? It is. It is. But uh, there are also some leggings that exist where the seam is on the outside. Like, for example, there's the, uh, there's, like, yoga pants and shit. Oh, yeah. And jeggings. Oh, yeah. Jeggings. Fucking jeggings. <laughs> also, also, it's possible to draw a skirt. Uh, there's like the fucking skirt. Depending on whatever the skirt is and how uh, long it is, you can make it as long as you fucking want, like a like a fucking dress, like it, like it, like you're going to some goddamn wedding reception, or you can just make it look short as shit and make your character look like it came from a fucking hentai. It doesn't really fucking matter. It, mm -hmm. It's pant, like it's 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 skirt. It's a skirt. It's a fucking skirt. Oh my fuck. It's a skirt. And <laughs> there's also the possibility of making your sh your skirt short enough to where you can actually, um, you can even, you can even make, uh, you can even make a skirts, skirts, you know, like, yeah. uh, like skirts and shorts at time. the same time. Now, I mean, it's just kind of one of those things where, like, if you make the skirt short to the point where they see the shorts, then that's fine. Uh, you can even, you can even, like, just fucking draw a skirt and just say, oh, there's skorts, and you can fucking get away with it, no damn problem. Like, it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's really not, I, I remember when I was a kid and I wore skorts, they were a huge pain in the ass. <laughs> but they were still convenient. Because that means I can hang off of the monkey bars and not have to worry about people seeing my underwear. So they they were convenient, <laughs> but they also kind of sucked. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, let me see. <laughs> Make your character look like it came from a fucking hentai. Best piece of art advice I've ever heard. Yes, you are welcome. <laughs> so now we got ourselves the real pain in the fucking ass, and that is shoes. Oh my god, I cannot stress this enough. I fucking hate I drawing still shoes. Can't. I Mm, I still sh struggle with shoes. Holy now, shit! Here's the thing: <laughs> socks. They're really not that big of a deal. You just draw those kinds of fucking socks, or hell, you can even wear those kinds of socks where they can't peek from the shoes, depending on what shoes that your character is wearing. There's also wearing a uh, thigh highs and knee socks. Which, by the way, if you do thigh highs or knee socks, make the damn indents. Just do it. Just do it. <laughs> Do not make your damn character look like she's some fucking Statue of Liberty made out of fucking copper and her body is is all like, oh yeah, this is totally fine. This is this is absolutely fine. No. No. <laughs> you need to like just fucking compact it all together. Literally just it's like bro, it's even the same way when you when you draw panties and you're showing off the ass. You have to make the ass look indented. Otherwise, it's not going to look great. Not only that, but you also, like, here's the thing. When you are drawing panties with the ass, you have to make, like, the two mounds are just squishing together. Because <laughs> that's how, because that's how I, because that's how clothes function. That That's how clothes and bodies function together. 
so now we got ourselves the shoes now when it comes to shoes like tennis shoes you don't really need much of anything just fucking draw an outline right here and then you add this kind of shit right here you put on like some kind of fucking front you put up you know like you put up like these sorts of things you grab it you put up the tongue you you put down the body of the shoe you it's optional to put laces but you don't have to and bam you're done that that's basically the whole point of the damn shoe because guess fucking what tennis shoes they're really that fucking easy to draw it is it is absolutely liberating like holy shit i can't tell you how many times that i prefer tennis shoes over heels because heels are an absolute bitch <laughs> i hate drawing freaking heels i really do they are a i do pain too. in my ass Jesus Christ, I feel like fucking Hank Hill that doesn't even know what the fuck a JPEG is, and all he wants to do is, is fucking print out a hot dog. Print out a hot dog? Yeah. Do I look like I know what a JPEG is? All I want all is, I is to print out a fucking... <laughs> right? And so now we got ourselves heels, and Jesus fucking Christ, I fucking hate heels, Jesus fucking Christ. It's, it's the heel that gets me, I'm telling you, it's the damn heel. Honestly... Depending on how thick you want to make the heel, just, just, honestly, just fucking, god damn it, I can't even, I can't even fucking do heels for this damn tutorial because I suck at it. Oh god, I hate them so much. Yeah, what I learned though is that you kind of got to do this sort of little fucking thing right here, where, like, you got to make it look curved, otherwise it's just not gonna look right. So, like, for example, you were to draw a heel or something, and then you just kind of go from there. And it just... I'm still learning how to draw heels, guys, okay? Because, like, fucking heels, they are a real pain in my ass, and it makes me want to fucking commit rope neck every single time I try to <laughs> draw heels. They suck. <laughs> Manual D said, harsh, you're in my TV, and when you were explaining about panties and ass, my cousin was wondering if I was fucking gay. Oops. <laughs> Oh no. Oops, sorry. <laughs> but I'm only but I'm only explaining this shit because it's because it's just how it is. Because I have no <laughs> other because I have no better way to explain it than through this. Oh yeah, there's also boots. These boots were made for clopping and that's just and that's what they all what do. Else. One of these days, these boots are gonna clop all over you. Uh, well, <laughs> you can make your boots, you can make your boots however fucking high you fucking want. High. Like, you can, mm -hmm. you can make them knee highs, you can make them thigh highs, just add the fucking indent, please, for the love of God, add the fucking indent. And then, you know, if you want to make your fucking boots look like platforms go for it fucking do it it's all up to you it's all up to you master anakin do it do it turn into the shia labeouf over there <laughs> do it just do it it is all up to you and if, and if you want to add fur you want to add the apple bottom jeans and the boots with the fur do it <laughs> do it just do it it is your character it is don't let your dreams be dreams just mm, just oh <laughs> god and then you know uh i think another thing that i should probably point out is uh glasses now glasses they are still a yes. bit of a struggle for me mostly because it's the whole rim thing i mostly mm. prefer mostly like prefer these kinds of glasses because glasses. they're a lot easier to draw like this but i mean if you also want to do like freaking uh like square rims you can do that mm. like just kind of fucking go all john from homestuck on them motherfuckers if you want <laughs> yeah the the thing about uh glasses with me it's not so much the rims as it is like the little arms it's the placement uh on the glasses because like if you've got like a side view or something i feel like it's like have you ever seen in like anime where like they have like the little arm of the glasses and then like you can see through it to see the eye. Yes. Yes. Like that drives me insane. It does. Like it does. for me, it's like, the placement of the glasses. Because I, I suck at placements of the glasses. I really fucking do. Because here's the thing. I don't want 
I don't want the glasses to completely shield away my eyes. Um, mm -hmm. About the boobage thing, what if your character is flat-chested? If your character is flat-chested and they ain't got boobs for shit, well then, make the make the, the characters, uh, like, make the freaking character shirt flat as a damn cutting board. Like, just fucking do a damn straight line. That That's all you really gotta do. Like, just make them as flat them as, as their flat boobs. As make them flat like a cutting board. Mm-hmm. Because when there is no, there boobs, is no boobs, there is no, uh, like, there is, like, nothing for the shirt to hold on to. So you just gotta just make it flat. Just make it flat. Make it flat. And trust yeah, me. Yeah, basically you just follow it. the curve of the body yeah. and just, you know, get rid yeah. of the extra lump. Yeah, like just, because, <laughs> fuck boobs. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even want the pair I have. <laughs> I, boobs are a pain. Boobs are a pain. Boobs are a pain. Boobs are a pain. They really are. A real big pain. Oh, you oh. know what? I probably should give some advice on boobs. Because yeah. I swear to God, I see <laughs> so much bullshit on boobs. Oh I, no. I can't. I can't. Okay, so let me let me tell you let me tell you guys this right now. Alright. Boobs, they are not circles. Okay? Like they are not just <laughs> hey, oh look, there's boobs, there they are. Okay, we're good. No, they are not that. Alright? And they are not something that you could just me like not no, they're not pointy either. They're not pointy either. They are also not something that you could just like something along the lines of like like no you you think of them like they are big fat water balloons you 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 look at them you think of how a boob would function normally if you have boobs then you're in luck because there's your reference guys I don't know what to tell you um. <laughs> But think of boobs like as though they are water balloons. They are saggy, all right? I do not know how else to tell you other than they are saggy. They 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 They're will saggy sag. And they, have weight. they will <laughs> sag, all right? I I legit do not know how else. They are not just they are not just me like they're not just perky. No, they are saggy motherfuckers unless your character is drawing something that makes them perk up. Like, for example, a push-up bra or a shirt that they are wearing or a shirt that they are wearing that is making their boobs compact or the pose of the arm that is compacting their boobs. Otherwise, the boobs look like saggy water balloon, like water balloons. <laughs> you see, here's the thing. And when it comes to the age of the woman, think of the boobs as though they are the Titanic. When they're old, they sink. <laughs> I, I I do not know how else to describe that. Oh, other God. than that. So there you go. That those are boobs. Those are boobs. And if you want to make your girl's hips dummy thick. You are in fucking luck because you actually fucking can. Like, holy shit, look at them big ass hips. No, they don't actually look like that. Don't do that. Don't fucking <laughs> do that. Just fucking, just fucking make them big like this. And then you got to make sure that the thigh works as well. So also mm -hmm. try to add in a little more indent to the V line. And then work your way into adding a bit more weight. And it's the same thing when it comes to drawing the V-line, too. If you are trying to make a bit of a chubby girl, then add indent to the V-line. Like, just add it. And do your best to add some rolls if you can. Because justice for chubby women. Just saying. Mm-hmm. And not only that, but if you draw flat girls, flat is justice. That is all I can really tell you. Mm hmm Like, just, that is mostly how you properly work with a woman's anatomy for the most part. A woman's, a woman's body is like, uh, they're, they're soft and squishy, soft and squishy, soft and squishy. And then there's the male body where it's like sharp and pointy, sharp and pointy, sharp and pointy. That is, I, I, bro. Mm -hmm. 
And men, like, the anatomy, I am still practicing on male anatomy, but it's a bit of a struggle, but I'll do my best. Basically, for the most part, if you are drawing on a male, uh, well, I can tell you one thing. If you plan on drawing your male look like he has, he is fucking sagging his pants, all you really gotta do is do the same damn thing that you do for Alexis. You freaking draw the underwear first, add the damn indent, and then draw the pants. What? That's what I like to call the slut drop. <laughs> it's what I like to call I love the slut it. drop. Um, oh, I wonder if I should also bring up, like, nails and shit. Because nails, they're really not a pain in the ass. All you really gotta do is just do this. Like, as long as you look at your hands from a specific angle, the nails are really not that hard. They're really not that complicated. Nails have never really been all that complicated. And when the uh, the hands are facing backwards, you draw your nails peeking out. Like, as though they are like a couple of hills in the fucking Teletubbies uh, shoot set. <coughs> Like make them look like 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 make them look like little hills as though you're watching the Teletubbies from 2000. Cause cause technically don't they kind of live in like a meadow full of hills and shit? Yeah, they do, and then they have a horrifying baby son. Yeah, I have no idea why the fuck they have a baby son. Oh, jewelry! Oh, jewelry! Thank you for bringing that up. Jewelry. All right, so now we got ourselves jewelries. Get your freaking get your freaking shit together, kids. It's time to go on a damn road trip about jewelry. Okay, so say for get example, jewelry here. Yeah. Okay, so say for example, you want an earring, right? Bloop. Just put a damn circle there. If you want to draw a freaking cuff. Bloop, there it is. If you want to freaking draw a freaking uh earring that has like that's like on the inside, bam, it is the holy shit. It is freaking revolutionary. You can even draw a damn chain. Freaking get freaking crazy with it. Hell, even draw freaking spikes on it. I don't freaking care. Like freaking bro, like draw that shit as though you're Sonic. Gotta go fast with that shit. You gotta freaking go all out with it. <laughs> and then, you know, you got chokers, which all you really got to do is just do this shit. Or you can even be creative and you can do like a sort of ribbon-like effect where you just kind of make it look like this choker has like certain pieces and shit. Uh, necklaces. Really not that easy. You just add a little, like really not that hard. You just do this. You add whatever you want. Now you can make it more detailed if you want. Uh, like, for example, you can add, like, you can give it, like, a bit of thickness and all that shit. Necklaces are really not that hard. Um, what other kind of jewelry is there? Rings. Oh. Uh, I mean, there's also these kinds of necklaces as well, where it's just, like, across the collarbone, and it's not a V-line straight down to the boobs. There's also those kinds of necklaces. Rings? Rings are a pain in the ass. Rings are a serious pain <laughs> in the ass, because of the amount of detail you want to do, but all you really got to do is just make it look like it's all wrapped around the finger, then you just add whatever the fuck you want on it. It, like, it really just depends on how detailed you want to go about it. Bracelets. You got yourself bracelets? Well, here is your fucking bracelets. Have a happy Pride Day, motherfuckers. There you go. There is your freaking bracelet right there. And I love bracelets just as much as the next guy because sometimes those kinds of bracelets are a lot of fun. And honestly, I I am I am still looking for an LGBT ally bracelet because I want to wear an, a bracelet like that like every single freaking day. I really mm -hmm. do. Because those seem, like, really fun. Because, like, I see my cousin, she has, like, a bracelet where it, show, where sh it shows that she's gay. And I want mm -hmm. to wear a bracelet to show, hey, I'm an LGBT ally. I want a bracelet like that. Mm -hmm. I want a bracelet like that. I really do. A uh, tongue accessory? Yeah. Uh, that's only if you stick out the tongue. All you gotta do is just stick out the tongue and then put a freaking circle in it. That's all you really gotta do. Yep. Yep, really. Um, then there's also, you know, the there's also like the lips. Like you can add snake bites, you can add a lip ring there, all that stuff. There's even um there's even eyebrows that you can freaking like 
eyebrow piercings that you can add. Um, oh, there's also anklets. Anklets mm -hmm. are also accessories. Like, there you go. There's anklets right there. It really just depends on Ooh. what you want to do with your character. Tattoos? Uh, I am still not very familiar with tattoos. I have yet to work on any kind of tattoo. Okay, I can take this one because I have done tattoos. Oh, Basically, really? you just... Yeah, I have because um, I've given a couple of my characters tattoos before. Mm -hmm. And it's not really all that hard. All you really have to do is come up with the design you want mm -hmm. and just, like, put it on the body where you want it and kind of just contour the shape of the tattoo to the shape of that body part. Not only that, but would it also be a good idea to make it look kind of faded? Um, It really depends on what you're going for. Because sometimes people have like straight up black tattoos yeah. and other times they're a little bit lighter. Heck, people even have white tattoos. Really? Um, it really just those. depends on what you're going for. Corsets. Hmm? Um, corsets, I mean, corsets, they're going to be detailed whether whether you like it or not. You just have to know the correct placements and then there's the whole design aspect of it. It's It really just depends on what kind of corset that you want your character to have. It's just, it's just how it is. Mm -hmm. um, let me see. I think, though, that might be it. Now I think we can get started on the fucking uh, dynamic. Like, the whole dynamic thing. Now, when you are in a pose that revolves around dynamic stuff like say for example you have this kind of pose uh, excuse me it is a very good idea to just try to make your character like have their like certain parts of their body react to it like for example uh because of the dynamic pose and how it looks you can expect the hair to go this way like, just go this way, like, towards the left. And if it were to, uh, if she were to be at the right, it would be the same difference. So it really just depends on, like, the head placement along with where the friction and the gravity is coming from. And the same thing applies to things like necklaces and stuff. Like, for example, if she was wearing a necklace it would go this way. If she were to be wearing bracelets, it would most likely be like, it would most likely look like it was just, um, like, like, okay. It would, it would look like it was close and attached to one side of the arm, but it is like, um, it is like it is going like the other way. You know, like, I think you know what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. Um, now, when it comes to chokers, it really just depends. Like, if there is a dangle or something, is sometimes the dangle stays in place. It doesn't really uh, go anywhere. Um, it doesn't really go anywhere. Uh, for shirts, I do know that depending on the dynamic of the shirt, it, it usually usually the, the the design of the shirt just stays the same. It doesn't really go anywhere. But if you want the shirt to go somewhere and not just stay in one place, then the best that you can really do in, in like things like this is just to just make it look like it is in fact attached to your character's body, but at the same time still have some, like basically give your uh, girl some air and, and stuff like that. And the same thing mm -hmm. can apply to pants, but not really, because pants, they are usually meant to, like, stay skin tight on your body. They're kind of meant to, you know, stay skin tight on your legs, so they don't really, you know, like, show a lot of friction or any of that shit. They normally just stay where they are. They, like, because, like, the thing is, um, what the hell is a... Oh, yeah, denim, denim is kind of like a, a bit of a a heavy fabric it's kind of a heavy fabric so it's like mm -hmm. you don't really need um 
Like, when you are trying to bring out friction, you don't really need to worry about that too much with pants. You really don't. Do you know anything about uh, nose accessories? Uh, oh, noise accessories. Well, there's always headphones and stuff. Uh, but other than that, um, if you want your character to be wearing things like headphones and stuff like that, you could just be, you know, like drawing earbuds and stuff. And then, you know, like, do something like this. Or you could have your character wearing, like, straight-up headphones. And just do something like that. Those kinds of things. It really just depends on, like, the hair and where the ears are. Because sometimes the, like, depending on the placement of the ears, it doesn't really look right. Um, and so, there's that. Um... Oh, tongue and nose. Tongue, um, well, with tongue, you just, you just really gotta stick it out, and then there's, like, the dot right there. For the nose, it's mostly just a dot. It really just depends on where you put the nose and what you do with it. Now, I'm sure that, like, you know, there are the typical, like, nostril piercings, or there's the kind of piercings where, like, it goes in one way and, like, out the other. You can do that kind of shit if you want. It's really just up to you and how you design your character. Because here's the thing. While, yes, um, the, uh, the story of the character is what counts, the design of your character also helps tell the story to some extent. The design of your character helps move your character's story forward. And it helps show off your character's personality a bit more. Mm -hmm. So it's when you do, it's when you give a lot of thought and love to your character's design that it really, really makes your character shine a lot more. Like, for example, mm -hmm. um, there's my girl, Alexis, and her design. Now, honestly, some people can take a look at her design and say it's generic. And to some extent, they're right. Like, really, her design is nothing special. In fact, it's really, it's nothing interesting. It's nothing different. It's nothing new. It's what you would expect from any kind of fucking character design or whatnot. It's, but... It's the thought that was put into her character design and her story for it that gives her a reason to have this design in the first place. Because mm -hmm. here's the thing, Alexis, she is a tomboy. She does whatever the fuck she wants and she doesn't really care, but at the same time she does care about what people think of her. She does care about how she looks and she does care about the fact that she wants to be a part of some kind of clique when she doesn't even know what clique she wants to be a part of in the first place. And so she does everything she can to clash these kinds of styles where the fucking, the whole uh, crop top thing, that's something that normally summer girls and, like, girls who like to show off themselves look, like, wear most of the time. And then, you know, you got the low riding jeans that show off her love handles and her underwear. Like, that's, they kind of wear something like that. But then, you know, you also got her hoodie, her sneakers, her hairstyle, her choker. Those are, like, a specific style that she likes. And here she is. She's trying to clash, like, two different styles together. And that is the whole purpose of her design in the first place. Is the fact that she is such a mess, and yet she wants to act like she doesn't care when she does... That she does everything she can to clash two types of styles in one style. And so this is considered her own style. This is considered her own design. And yes, to some extent, it is generic. I mean, I'm, I'm not gonna lie. I think, her, I think her design is generic. I feel like there's a lot more that I could put into it. But at the same time, when you get to a point when you think, what else is there to add then that's it. Your character is fine mm -hmm. the way it is. It's best to not force a design on your character because otherwise it's just not going to look good. 
So when I got to a specific point where I said, what else is there to put on her? I stopped because then I realized, no, nah, she's fine. She's fine the way she is. Mm -hmm. And that entire profile was done on mouse. I didn't have a tablet when I did that. I, yeah, that's really good. yeah, it took a, it took a day to fix the anatomy of this because it was originally a code geos base. And you know the anatomy in Code Geass is kind of yikes. Ooh, yeah. Yeah, it is yikes. But it's her story and who she is as a person that also helped the character design at its best. And so, honestly, everyone has their own way of designing their character. And as long as you feel proud of your character and what you feel is them in a nutshell then you're doing just fine there is no reason to design a character if you don't think about what you think is a good character design because if you're just doing it for other people well then you're basically just forcing elements that doesn't make sense and that's that's not good that's not good so, um, with that, I believe that should be all the tips and tricks that I have for you guys for MS Paint. And especially when you're working for bases and shit. So, uh, thank you guys so much for joining <laughs> my stream. And thank you guys so much for taking the time to listen. And thank you guys so much for putting up with me and my bullshit. Like, for real, thank you. <laughs> I'm sorry that I got a bit passionate. It's just, mm, I just like helping people, and I like being funny while I'm doing it. I like to think I'm funny, but I, I'm actually really not. I'm, I'm just being you are. a cringe fest. <laughs> and so, yeah, I, I hope you guys enjoyed. Um, uh, wait, someone said one last thing harsh. Okay, what is it? Um, I'm now kind of curious, but, um, <clears throat> mm. I, I had no idea. Wait, shit. I also need to look into that. Yeah. Thank God I got money. <laughs> 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 Sorry, I'm looking at the body pillow now. But, uh, yes. Thank you guys <laughs> so much for joining me. How do you drag images to MS Paint? What do you mean? Like, how do you copy and paste? It's simple, really. You just copy the image, and then you go up to this little clipboard right here, and then, bam, the image is pasted right there. And if you want to, like, drag certain images, you go to this little box right here, or you click select, or you select free form, which then you just do the entire image, and then, bam you're moving it around and uh another little key trick that i'm sure you noticed there's like this little thing right here where it's like the image is blocking out just click transparent and you're all set you do not have to worry about that little white thing blocking out your image if you don't want that to happen so long as your secondary co color is the color that you want transparent otherwise it's not gonna look right like here uh for example if I were to make this, uh, say for example, pink, this is what would happen. You gotta make the secondary color the color that it is transparent of, like, otherwise it's going to look weird. So yeah, there you go, guys. Um, <laughs> thank you guys so much for joining my stream. I really do appreciate you guys being here and listening to my bull crap. <laughs> <laughs> and if you guys have any questions, I will do my best to answer them in the comment section. Uh, if you guys ever have any more questions, like down in the comments of this stream. And you folks have a good rest of your night. I love you all. And I shall take my leave. Goodbye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.
拜拜。